Hello everybody, a quick video here uh, in honor of our month of brews that we're doing, kind of a bonus episode. The new promo for this month has been revealed and if you have been listening to me, you have also been seeing it on your screen. It is Bren, the Chronicler of Ages. I'm sorry, I added the the part. It's Bren, Chronicler of Ages. He is a two-cost Praxis unit, meaning, of course, he's fire and time. Easy to cost and cast in those colors, as he's only one fire, one time, so that's kind of nice. He is a 1-3, which makes him a little bit fragile. Uh, he only survives a couple of pieces of removal, dies in most of the weapons that are in play. So you're going to have to do a little bit of work to keep this guy in play. But if you can keep him in play, his ability is kind of spicy and kind of worth it. Uh, his ability is, the first time you play a spell on your turn, you get plus one power this turn, then increase this ability by one. Which means that off of Bren Chronicler of Ages, you will be able to chain spells. Uh, the later you get into the game with this guy in play, the stronger that's going to become, which is going to do a really, really nice thing for this card because it's going to help increase the power of your draw spells because typically the problem with draw spells is you play the spell, but then you're sacrificing playing whatever you've drawn this turn for whatever you got in order to play it next turn. If you've got a Bren out on, say, two, that makes most draw spells effectively Free. And if you've got him on three, that makes almost all of the playable draw spells free, which is really, really, really nice. We're going to be looking at him in quite a few decks, trying to pair him with another card that we've had problems leveraging that we'll talk about in just a moment. So, really excited for Bren the Chronicle of Ages. And how do you get this card? Just play the game. Every day that you win a game... From here until at least the end of the month, you will get a copy of Bryn the Chronicler of Ages, one a day. You can also craft the premiums of him, I believe, but not yet. I think you can't craft him until after the month is over. So after that, you'll be able to craft him. And I can't remember the cost of the promo cards, but it's not very expensive, if I remember right. Um, but this is Bren the Chronicler of Ages, and since this is the month of brew, we went ahead and brewed up a deck that uses a few of the spicy underplayed cards that, you know, we've been using all month. So let's go ahead and look at a, this deck real fast. Now, I don't know if this deck is competitive. In fact, I'm going to assume it's not competitive, but... That's not the point of the month of brews. The point of the month of brews is to make up fun stuff. So my first thoughts when I saw this card were to go ahead and pair him with one of our other pet problem childs, which is problem children, problem child, whatever, which is this library phoenix. So if you recall the other video I discussed, the problem with library phoenix is that it only affects the spells that are in your hand and it's really, really hard then to chain any effects or do anything with the Library Phoenix because you discount the spells in your hand, you play those out, you get another handful of expensive spells. And if you don't have expensive spells, it means you have cheap spells, which means the Library Phoenix effect is not really that useful unless you pair it with something that likes casting spells, but then it's hard to keep it alive and the Library Phoenix alive because the Library Phoenix is expensive, like all of these problems. Bren helps fix that because suddenly you get discounts on your spells. Bren helps you, over the course of a game, chain that discount into multiple effects later. Like, you've discounted all of your spells by one or two with the Library Phoenix. Maybe your draw spells are free. You play the draw spell. Bren generates more power that you then didn't have before, which then lets you cast those spells you didn't have. So it combos really, really well with Bren. So we're going to try that out. We still have all the same problems that we talked about before, which is that the Phoenix is hard to keep alive and yada, yada, yada. But... But now the payoff is a little bit better if you can pair him with a Bryn. And the beautiful thing is you don't have to have the Phoenix and the Bryn out on the same turn. Library Phoenix can come down before Bryn, help you cast those draw spells to find Bryn, and then because Bryn is so cheap, you can maybe hopefully play Bryn the turn you draw into him, cast another spell, and start getting those discounts rolling. So really excited by this card. Uh, to use with Library Phoenix. And then we need to look at what the payoff is. And this brings us to a third card that I've wanted to brew with but haven't yet. In fact, you can tell I haven't because I don't have any copies of it yet. And that is the Emerging Colossus. So, 
How else are we going to make use of Bryn? Well, Colossus doesn't combo well with the Phoenix because the Phoenix decreases the cost of the spells. And if you remember in Eternal, wherever you cause these effects, they stay. So if I discount the cost of a spell in my hand, I cast the spell, it keeps its discounted cost when it hits my void, which is a problem for cards like the Emerging Colossus because the spell has to cost six or more and then you reduce its cost by six. So you can't really chain the Colossus very well, and you also can't chain him working with the Phoenix. Except there's one spell in the game that happens to love the Phoenix and love the Emerging Colossus effect, and that is bum, 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 Invoke the Waystones. So we are bringing back Invoke the Waystones, one of the decks, one of the cards that we tried to pair with the Phoenix before. We're bringing it back with the Phoenix and with the Emerging Colossus because Invoke the Waystones happens to cost six. So if you're emerging, if you haven't invoked the Waystones in your void, which might have been put there either by casting it on six, maybe you cast it on a discount and then cast it another one. Anyways, getting one in your yard that costs at least six, the Emerging Colossus will bring it back and then make it cheap or free, which means you can then start chaining Invoke the Waystones because Invoke the Waystones, when you cast it, makes a copy of itself that costs one more. Well, if you happen to have cast Invoke the Waystones for free, that means the copy that comes back will only cost one, meaning that if you can get this card discounted, Invoke the Waystones is the ultimate chainable spell. Now, it's a little bit hard to make use of because you have to discard the top four cards of your library, and then whatever that fifth card is, that's going to be the one you play. So you play every fifth card, and we don't yet have a way of stacking the top five cards of our library. We can only stack the top generally one, maybe two. Most of the time, it's only one which means that Invoke the Waystones uh, will get rid of that card and then play the fifth one. Also, it will churn through our deck pretty quickly. So either we need to make a, have a way to uh, make use of that using something like, say, uh, Means to an End, which, hint, hint, is another deck we may be working on later, or uh, some way of putting all of those cards back. Now, we went ahead and went with the idea of let's put all of those cards back using... Bum, 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 Lumen Reclaimer. So the idea behind Lumen Reclaimer is that we're going to have a Lumen Reclaimer either in our hand or have played one off of the Invoke, put all the cards back with the Invoke, and then keep chaining the Evoke. So now that we're doing all of this, what are we looking for? What are we hoping to get out of this whole process? Well, we are hoping to kill our opponent. Yeah, imagine that. And we're hoping to do that using Decimate. So, Decimate is a card that deals 10. It cannot be negated, nor can it be blocked by Aegis. So, what this lets us do is hit our opponent for 10 with nothing they could really do about it. Hopefully, they haven't gained a lot of life. Hopefully, they don't have a lot of big weapons in play. But even if they do, well, our deck is designed around churning itself repeatedly, including putting itself back in, putting the deck itself back into our library so that we can keep going through it and the nice thing is that both Lumen Reclaimer and Invoke the Waystones create multiple copies of themselves meaning that we're going to be able to hopefully churn through this deck repeatedly and get this deck really going and end with a couple of decimates at our opponent hopefully killing them but if not a board absolutely full of Lumen Reclaimers and maybe some Library Phoenixes maybe some uh, maybe some Brins and some Emerging Colossi. So the idea here being that we're going to, once we start chaining this deck, just create a really, really, really super advantageous board position. So that's what we want to do on the end part of the game. That's our end game. How are we going to get there, though? Well, to do that, we have Celestial Omens to find our combo pieces, Seek Power to make sure we have enough power, Twilight Hunt in order to help activate our Emerging Colossus because Emerging Colossus does, has a over, does have Overwhelm and does have to hit the player. So being a 7-9, if we can Twilight Hunt the Emerging Colossus, we'll be able to give it Killer and then hit one of their smaller units, killing it, overwhelming the damage onto the opponent, and then getting that reduction. Also, it helps because it gives the Emerging Colossus a pseudo charge because you can killer the Emerging Colossus, and though you can't attack the opponent, you can use the killer effect the turn that you've dropped the Emerging Colossus, hopefully getting that discount and starting the chain. Uh, and then to protect everything, we have Backlash, 
and unseal, as well as hailstorm and teleport for our removal. And then to help hopefully find the things we need, we have four copies of strategize and nine of the crests. We could run the full 12 because there are 12 crests available in these colors. However, we wanted some of our power to come into play undepleted possibly. So since we're running uh, 10 normal sigils, we're also running two of each of the seats. And the idea there is that hopefully we're going to be able to play the stuff as it comes to us. And this is our Emergent Strategies deck using the new promo card, Bryn the Chronicler, with a couple of spicy ones in the Emergent Colossus and the Library Phoenix. So hopefully we're going to get our four copies and we'll give this thing a try. So expect a video of this one next week sometime, uh, seeing how it went, and then of course tuning it up and seeing if we can make another copy version. Because I also want to try this in either a straight Praxis deck or in a three color, uh, we'll call it Praxis Scar, Praxis Scar, I don't know, uh, Time, Fire, and Shadow. So thank you guys very much. Uh, keep on brewing, and we will see you guys again next time. Bye.